Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be looking at the 2019 microeconomics exam, question number three from set one. This one is all about game theory. Let's get into it. Now get your game face on. For this question, we have a payoff matrix we have to analyze. There's only one pizza place in town and it's Patrick's Pie. Patrick has two possible strategies, either to advertise or not advertise. D's Pizzeria is a potential competitor, and D's has two potential strategies as well, either to enter the market or stay out. Keep that in mind as we move forward and look at this payoff matrix more closely. For part A, we have to identify the actions which will result in the highest combined profit. To find that, just add up the total amount of money in each of the four quadrants. When you do that, you have an upper right corner quadrant with the highest combined profit. It's $175. In that quadrant, we have D's Pizzeria staying out of the market and Patrick's Pie advertising. That is the collusion outcome. To get this point, just identify it. D's Pizzeria stays out and Patrick's Pie advertises. You got your point. The question now is whether or not either firm has an incentive to cheat on this collusion agreement. To find that out, take a look at the possible decisions we could have. Right now, D's Pizzeria is earning $0 economic profit by staying out of the market. If D's Pizzeria switched to entering the market, we would see negative $2 of profit. Clearly, D's Pizzeria does not have an incentive to cheat on this agreement. As far as Patrick's Pie goes, currently Patrick will be advertising. If Patrick advertises, he will earn $175 of economic profit. If he chooses to not advertise, his profit drops to $100. That also means Patrick does not have an incentive to cheat. In order to get this point, answer using the numbers. No, D's profit would decrease from zero to negative two dollars and Patrick's would decrease from $175 down to $100. Make sure you explain fully using the numbers in order to get these points. For part C, we have to identify whether or not Patrick's pie has a dominant strategy. Remember the definition of a dominant strategy here. It's a strategy that is chosen regardless of what the other firm does. In order to figure that out, we have to put ourselves in the mind of Patrick's pie. And when Patrick is deciding what he might do, he has to consider what D might do. If he thinks that D is going to enter the market, then he is in this column. Patrick must choose between $50 of profit and $150 worth of profit. Since $150 worth of profit is better, if he believes that D is going to enter the market, then he should not advertise because he will earn more profit. If on the other hand, he thinks that D is going to stay out of the market, then he is operating in this column. And then Patrick has to choose between $175 of profit or $100 of profit. Here, $175 is again better. And that means if he thinks that D is going to stay out of the market, then advertising is a better choice. Since his best choice is dependent on what D does, he does not have a dominant strategy. And to get this point, you just have to say no. For part D, we have to identify any Nash equilibria that there are in this payoff matrix. We've already partially solved it, but now we have to think about D and what D might do. And when D is considering his options, he must think about potential actions of Patrick's pie. If he thinks that Patrick's pie is going to advertise, then he is in this column and D must decide whether to enter the market or to not enter the market. If he chooses to stay out, he will earn $0 economic profit. If he chooses to enter the market, he loses $2. As a result, his best choice would be to stay out of the market if he believes that Patrick's pie is going to advertise. 
If on the other hand, he believes that Patrick's Pie is going to not advertise, then he would be choosing a strategy from this row. And in that row, he can either earn $15 of economic profit or $0 of economic profit. $15 is clearly better than zero. And so, if he believes that Patrick is going to not advertise, then it would be best for D to enter that market. Since we have two quadrants with strategies picked by both of these actors, we actually have two equilibria here. And you just identify them. There are two Nash equilibria. One of them is where D stays out and Patrick advertises. The other one is where D enters and Patrick does not advertise. Identify those quadrants and you've got your points. For E, Patrick is going to offer D $20 to stay out of the market. And we have to redraw the matrix based on this fact. What we change here is the stay out column for D. Because that is the scenario where D would be paid $20 by Patrick. We're going to take $20 from Patrick's profit and put it onto the D side. That changes the numbers in the upper quadrant to $155 and $20. While the lower quadrant, we have $80 and $20. If you drew that correctly with those different values, you've got your point here. Now we have to solve this payoff matrix and find the Nash equilibrium. There's only one this time. First, we're going to look at Patrick. If Patrick believes that D is going to enter the market, then he is in this column. And Patrick must choose between $50 of economic profit and $150 of economic profit. Since $150 is better, Patrick is going to choose to not advertise if he thinks that D will enter the market. In the other column, if D chooses to stay out, then Patrick is deciding between $155 of profit and $80 of profit. Now, $155 is better and Patrick will choose to advertise. Patrick's decisions are in the same place they were before we redrew this payoff matrix. Now what will D do? D must think about what Patrick is going to do. First, he must think about whether or not Patrick is going to advertise. And if he thinks that Patrick is going to advertise, then D is choosing between $2 of loss or $20 of profit. $20 of profit is clearly better here. And if D thinks that he's going to not advertise, then D will be choosing between $15 of profit and $20 of profit. Once again, $20 is a better choice than the lower amount. And now we have one Nash equilibrium. That will be that D will stay out and Patrick will advertise. And that's our answer. And you'll get your point. And there you have it. If you got all of that right, you are on your way to acing your next economics exam. If you like this video, please like and subscribe below. And if you have any questions, ask them in the comments. Then head over to ReviewEcon.com where you can find lots of games and activities to help you practice the skills necessary in economics. If you want to support this channel even more, head over to ReviewEcon.com and purchase the Total Review Booklet with everything you need to know to do well on the microeconomics and macroeconomics exams. Thank you very much. I'll see you guys next time.